Hello friends, you know when you just get this idea and it's not really on your path of like your planned out things, but you just feel like you need to do it? That's kind of the way this video is. Like I've got a lot of other things here, um, new makeup that I could be focusing on, this and that, but for some reason this idea got into my head as I've been using these different products in this video more and more. And I'm like, you need to do a video basically stating that Revlon Color Stays still got it. Color Stay, that range of Revlon's line takes me back to the very beginning days of my channel. And I'm sure it was around well before that too. But I remember Color Stay Foundation being like the go-to, the holy grail of many people I watched and myself as well. Like they had the combo oily formula, they had the normal to dry formula. And it was like, that stuff was great. And then the years roll on and dozens upon dozens of different foundations come out and it takes people's attention away. But I'm here to say that they got pumped now and they're great. <laughs> Still great. What's interesting is back when my channel started, like back in 2007, 2008, I was definitely all for the combo to oily and now I'm the normal to dry. Aging is real. But I've realized in recent days just how well this actually still looks, still wears, and I love it also with this powder because I've been in search of like a new powder for my purse. Um, just a pressed kind of touch up powder, like not always to even use the powder, but like I want the mirror there too. And I thought, let's do Revlon Color Stay. And this powder is so great. It's so great. I don't want to put it in my purse. I may buy a separate one for my purse, but I'm loving the duo of these. Um, I've liked this on top of lots of different foundations just to set or to come up here and touch up with. And I've got several other things that I'll highlight in this video. Um, I'll probably kind of breeze through the segments of the video where I'm using something else, but there are several things from this Color Stay range, both eyes, lips, where they are still absolutely slaying it and you don't hear many people talking about it. So just my little PSA here, I don't know why I felt the need to do this, but I like, you know, giving attention to those things that are just simply forgotten for no other reason than the fact that other new stuff just kept coming out. It was like nothing bad happened to this. More new and new and new and new just kind of took the spotlight. So again, this is my Revlon Color Stay. Nowadays this has a pump. Um, they claim 24 hour wear with this. I do have the normal to dry formula and I wear fresh beige just like I always did. This does have SPF 20 in it and yeah, if you're combo to oily you can get that formula also. But I've got my skincare on. I'm not even doing primer underneath this. I'm just putting the foundation itself on and I feel like now one pump gives you quite a bit. That should be enough. But like I was saying, I'm not really needing any certain primer to make this work. And I just spot that all around, leopard mode. And then use whatever kind of brush you want. I'm gonna use a dampened beauty blender and we're just gonna bop this stuff in. Nice coverage. How much coverage is it, Em? Well, I would say it's a strong medium coverage. I think it approaches full. I feel like it's as full as I need it to be. I mean, just really assessing it as I get it all blended in. Is this not a perfect shade match, number one? But also, the reason why I might say it's not 100% full coverage is just the few little places I see where I think, okay, it's it's still not quite covering that. Like, I can see a little remaining melasma or freckles. Just a little. A little bit of the... Uh, broken capillaries around the nose. That's not to say I couldn't maybe build this foundation a bit more um, in an effort to cover those things better, but overall I would say natural matte finish and just looks really good. Now I have used the um, Color Stay Concealer with the wand applicator. I don't even have it on hand right now and I've never really been that impressed by it. Um, I wouldn't be shocked if Revlon put out like their take on you know, a shape tapish kind of concealer. But I'm just gonna go on with, um, today I'm gonna use e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer and then we'll be setting it.
My concealer is on. This is my second color stay thing that I think is great, and it's the pressed powder. I wear it in light medium, number 830. Um, the way this is packaged, you can obviously see the pan of powder there, and then they do have a little puff in the bottom. So if you did want to take this on the go for touch-ups and there's a mirror in there, it'd be great for that. Again, I may purchase another one of these to keep in my purse, but I've become so interested in using this as well up here. Still love my various loose powders, but this is just, you know, another thing in the rotation, another thing that I like. Um, and I just feel like it was probably designed to wear well with the foundation, and it does. Like, the combo of the two really locks in. So here I am just putting it on my T-zone, pretty much. Seriously, guys, it really mattifies. So if you like a matte look, this may be for you, but also not a pore to be seen. It really smooths and perfects this whole zone, and it stays looking that way. So that was my Wet n Wild Wet Shady Beaches bronzer, and I'm gonna pop on um, a shade from my new CoverGirl Clean Fresh Blush Palette in Plum Blossom. I'm gonna use this middle shade right here. Catrice Sungasm for my highlight. Again, just breezing through these steps because they're just not really like my focus of the video, but I still wanted to show them just in case you were curious about how the whole look came together and I was planning for it to be all drugstore, so I thought that would be of interest. I'm sorry, but what is this coverage lacking here? I mean, my foundation all over the skin, the concealer is obviously good, the Elf Hydrating Camo Concealer, always love that. But then, you know, topping it with the powder, getting it really matte and perfected, and then kind of going in with our accent colors like I just did, so good, so, so good. Another Revlon color stay thing that I've realized is really, really good is this product called the Brow Creator. It's neat, it has the spoolie on one end, it has a skinny retractable pencil, and then it also has a little powder dabber thing. So that's just one more way to get your fill in. Um, you can kind of do it alongside the pencil and get maybe a little thicker but still soft looking fill in, you know? So here I am just taking this pencil. I wear this, by the way, in the shade dark brown. So there we are just getting it all filled in. I maybe didn't even take quite as much time as I normally would on that step. But then you've got this little powder dabber. It's dabbing down into powder and it's one of those like little, you know, spring loaded seeming things. And if you want more fill in, you can just kind of go right over top of your brow and I feel like it adds even more. So if you're wanting that like thicker look, it's nice, but it's not as opaque maybe as um, a cream or a pomade in your brows. And then you of course have your little spoolie wand. You can go through it. And to completely finish that brow, I would come in with some kind of a gel. Even this Maybelline Brow Fast Sculpt, if you're not wanting to put a lot of extra color on, only use the longer um, bristle side of the brush and it really will make the hairs kind of be uplifted and stand up more like none other. They can hang all day. <laughs> so just add it to the list of things that nobody really talks about. And the reason why I guess I hadn't been talking about it, it had fallen kind of back behind where I store brow pencils into another area, and I hadn't picked this up or used it for the longest time. And I kind of got back to it recently. I'm like, whoa, nice texture to the pencil. Okay, you've got that control and precision of a skinny pencil, but like it's not too hard, not too soft. You know how we are about that texture. And then just having that powder option, it's really, really nice. Sort of get that work through all that pencil I just did. And then real softly go to the powder step. The powder step might even be an initial go-to for those who just don't really want to use much pencil at all. But it does add color and it adds some thickness. And then fluff them. And this is not Revlon, this is Maybelline. Okay, now I'm gonna continue on, you guys, with a quick eye look. Um, I'm using my Milani eyeshadow primer to get it all started, of course. And the palette I'm gonna use is actually by Profusion. It's kind of, it's kind of cute, kind of a little bit cheesy, but look at the colors on the inside. 
I got this in my last Walmart order and I was thinking kind of gives me a lot of teddy bear vibes like Too Faced Teddy Bear palette with kind of some rosiness and the neutrals, nice matte and shimmer mix. I'm going to try this out and use this for my eye look. And by the way, it's called the Beauty Clutch, Profusion Beauty Clutch 20 Shade Palette with Mirror. Just a light, quick look with this palette. Um, I thought it did pretty well. This shade here didn't give off quite as much intensity as I expected, but this one did quite well. Um, the shimmer that I put on my lid right here, I thought did great right off the brush. So it seems like a nice little palette, but again, I've only tried just that small portion of it so far. Okay, eyes are done, and I'm gonna move into two great Color Stay lip products that I love. Number one are the lip liners. I know I've been talking about these a lot, but I've got several shades that I just think are incredible. These are easy to put on, although I do kind of like something on my lips first. Now, I forgot to put on one of my hangover pillow balms at the very, very start of my skincare, so something that works really well under any lip liner. It's not too greasy, it's not too thick. I tell you guys, I'm throwing back to an EOS lip balm. Now I got this one fairly recently. It's the Honey Apple. I found it at Target. Um, but it's great about not being too slippery. And it's absolutely the perfect texture to give your lips a little more moisture, but it won't alter the staying power of like a lip liner that you put on top of it. So just a little tip there, but um, three shades that I really like. We've got mauve. I'll draw them on a kind of thick so you can really see the tone. This would be your deep dusty rose. That's going to be great to pair with lots of different neutral lip looks that you might do. Um, anything just a little bit rosy, it's going to pair well. I've had raisin for quite a while too and I would call this a deep reddish berry. That has paired really nicely with a lot of different um, red looks or even, you know, just a neutral lip that you want to deepen up and add that totally different tone to. And then most recently I got chocolate. Now chocolate reminds me depth-wise kind of similar to um, raisin, but it's more like neutral, it's just a little bit darker too. Those are my three that I really like. Um, I think I'm going to put on mauve here because that's the one I've used the least recently. And it's kind of nice for a your lips but better type of look. But these wear so well. Like I totally enjoy filling in my whole lips with them. Each color on its own looks great, but pairing with other things, sort of adjusting other lip colors that you've already put on and then, you know, adding a little bit. Like I did in the last video, the 90s um, makeup look. It's like I already went on with Teddy Bear from Milani, but then I brought in chocolate to kind of shape and add color. Oh, and if you want to point your tip even more, there's a little sharpener on the end. I tell you what, an EOS balm before liner. It's basically matte. It doesn't change your finish at all. It just makes the glide even better. Okay, so there's mauve. Absolutely love it. Nice little everyday color. As you can see, it's not too warm. Love that. Then something I'd kind of forgotten about also, the Color Stay Satin inks. So these are like sort of a liquid product here that you're gonna put on and they really fight to hang on to the lips, I think, longer than a classic lipstick. I'm gonna go ahead and just put this shade, this is called Silky Sienna. I'm gonna put this on top of my lip liner today, but you wouldn't absolutely have to have liner with this because you are gonna see this color full on. It, it's not like it's sheer or anything.
they go on with that shine and that moisture and you're like, okay, what is this even? You know, is it a liquid lipstick? Is it a lip gloss? And you start to feel a little bit of a dry down, but what happens is that it doesn't dry down like entirely, okay? So you still have some moisture and you're gonna have more staying power than you would with pretty much any classic lipstick, but it's not gonna feel as dry as a matte liquid lip and it's definitely not gonna be traveling around your face or outside your lip line at all. So even now, like about a minute later, I can feel that it, it's changed texture some. I can still feel moisture on my lips, but yet it's not as slick and slippery as it first was when I put it on. And they last well. Again, they're comfortable. Um, nice range of shades. I really like the Silky Sienna shade, and I think that would be super pretty for you know the upcoming season. But yeah, this is my look sporting my five um, Revlon Color Stay favorites. If you've got some that I should be adding to my list or things that I haven't really referenced that I should try, let me know. The Color Stay Foundation. Then the Color Stay Pressed Powder. I really do think those two are a great combo. Really enjoyed this two-in-one brow product. Again, this is called the Color Stay Brow Creator. It has the pencil, it has the powder, and also the spoolie on it. Just a really effective fill-in tool, and of course the staying power is good with that as well. And then for lips, you must try the Color Stay Lip Liners. They last so well, even just on their own, but a terrific accent to other looks. And then the Color Stay Satin Inks, I think are a pretty innovative product, by Revlon. Um, they're very full color. They last really, really well. They're not going to take you quite as far as a matte liquid lipstick or like a Maybelline matte ink crayon. Again, because there is that little bit of moisture that this is giving you. So there's always give and take with lip products in that way. But if you're typically like a cream lipstick wearer and you're looking for something that steps it up a little bit beyond that, I think this would be a nice transition for you because you're still going to get some moisture. But thank you guys so much for watching today. I hope this was helpful and I will see you again very soon. Soon. I love you. Bye.